Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This is going to be the tutorial that's going to show you how to make this in stitches crochet top pattern. And in this tutorial, I'm using this soft kind of, uh, it's soft anti-peeling which means it won't get fuzzy after a while. I try to use that for all my projects. And I use this in uh, three different colors, as you can see, a light gray, a dark gray, and white. I have a little bit of the white left. Uh, I had one skein of each, and it was enough to make the whole sweater, or the whole top. And this is four ply yarn, uh, which is 10 ply for Australia. And also I used a four millimeter hook, which is a size G hook for the US. I went ahead and I made several of these strips to go around my daughter. It took what looks like eight total. So like four fit her on the front and then I started doing the other three and I tried it around her and it looks like it's going to fit perfectly. But she's a 10 year old girl. Uh, if you want something that's uh, for a bigger person then you can always make adjustments with the length of how big you make the strip and also how many of the strips you make. And I'm not going to go into this tutorial how to make the strips because I have an afghan that I made that shows you exactly how to make this. And I, don't, I have a pictorial tutorial uh, pattern, everything already done on this. So I'm going to go ahead and refer you to that video. I'll have the link down below. Make your strips as long as you want. I made mine 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, about 14 um, sections. And the only difference between the afghan, uh, other than the size, is I only did one time around the outside. So the, in the afghan, I think I do it three times around. So only do it one time. And I'm going to show you how I was sewing this together. So go ahead and grab your hook and your yarn. Once you've got all your pieces made, remember where it is on the video here and I'll show you how to sew your pieces together. So I am going through the holes starting here on the very end. Each section has, uh, you know, five double crochets here, five double crochets here. And on each side there's a hole. I'm using this hole the first hole before and after the end section to start my sewing. So I'm going to go ahead and put my hook into the very first one here, this one, and I'm going to slip stitch to attach my color. Now the reason why I say it doesn't matter, it can be one off whether you have 14 or 12 or 13, something like that. It can be if you have 13 and you go one less or one more uh, through the, the pattern, it's okay because it can still work out. It doesn't have to be perfectly exact. So once you've got your uh, yarn attached to the loose one, go ahead and chain three. Then find that same end of the hole here, this one right here. Put your hook through it and you're going to slip stitch that on there and then chain three and now we're going to be skipping back and forth from one piece to the other so we just put one on this piece so now we're going to find the next hole up on this one so this is where we were before and now we need to move over to the next hole and slip stitch your yarn in there and then again chain three find the next hole on the next project I mean on the other strip and slip stitch and then chain three find the next hole here to slip stitch in you're going to keep doing that chain three find the next one slip stitch okay okay this next hole is the last hole on this strip because see this this is my ending now so i'm going to chain three and this one actually has two. It has one here, and then this is the ending strip right here. So what I did before was just slip stitch into that one, 
chain three, go back into the same stitch that I just did previously. So you have two in there. Then I chained three. Then I went into that final, there it is, the final section here. So if you wanted, it's, it's not very noticeable. I mean, I had to do this a few times. Um, I didn't uh, count the rows as I did them. I just tried to measure them up as best as possible and uh, do a sewing method that didn't, did, uh, didn't need to be exact. I think if I skip this one, see what that looks like. Ah, it doesn't look bad. So, get that out of the way. So I guess the, there is an option to just skip it and let the part be bigger or wider there too. And then I'm going to go ahead and just slip stitch and cut my yarn. Because I know people have a difficult time making a, a, um, pieces of clothing like this in, in sections. So I'm trying to do it as easy as I can or nothing really has to be perfect or exact. Lots of room to make mistakes. Okay, so I'm going to find the correct one I needed on this side because now I'm going to close my circle. So I'm going to slip stitch on this side, chain three, find my other hole here. Let's see, these are my two end pieces. So this is my first hole after that. So I'm going to slip stitch and that. And chain three. Now I just attached it on that part. So I'm going to go back on this strip. Then I'm going to again go back and forth on my strip. And I'll bring you back here when I get done. Okay, I'm just finishing up sewing on my end here. I'm almost to the end. Oh, cool. Actually equaled up that time perfectly. Let's go ahead and just close this off. <laughs> I'm kind of designing it as we go. I want to get it on film because uh, once I get that section done, it'll be done. I won't be able to show you. So, so I guess I'm going to go ahead and attach my yarn here in one of the middle sections of the end and just do one single crochet in each stitch. It's going to give us our base and since there's three chains I'm going to go ahead and put three single crochets just to try to keep it the same all the way around. And if I need to adjust it by one or two stitches to make it an even number it's not that big a deal at all. So go ahead and well, <laughs> go ahead and do your single crochets all the way around. Remember in the chain space, if you want to sew using five chains instead of three chains, that's fine too. If you want more of a lacy uh, in between. Uh, just remember if you use five chains then do five stitches over it. I used three chains so I did three single crochets over it. Just stay consistent. You can change this, uh, this pattern up any way you like. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, do my single crochets all the way around and then I'll see you when you get back here. And just in case you're wondering if I'm putting a slip stitch in the same stitch as the chain connection here, I'm not. I'm skipping past where I'm actually I've done the attachment to the chain and I'm just chaining on the, the chain itself. And then when I get to that next connection point, I just skip it and go to the next stitch. Okay, I just got to the end of my row and I counted my stitches and I have an odd number so to even it out I'm gonna in this very last stitch go ahead and do a single crochet in that very last stitch and then to end my row I'm gonna slip stitch in the very beginning stitch and go ahead and chain one. Now we're gonna be doing something called a Glover stitch and you don't have to use a Glover stitch if you want to use another pattern for the top of the, the, the top the top of the top. 
um, you can uh, change if you want to any stitch that you like but I, I want the Glover stitch because it is thick enough that it, it may not be uh, shown so easily you can't see the top so much it'll be kind of a lacy yet warm top anyway the Glover stitch is done in rows so you're gonna have the front of your work facing you and then when you get all the way down to the end of your row you're gonna need to chain one and turn your work to where the back will be facing you and then continue to do the Glover stitch this way that's what I mean by it's done in rows and it's not done in the round so let me go ahead and show you how to do the Glover stitch it's done using two stitches this is why we did um, multiples of two and I'm gonna go ahead and start with the stitch that we slip stitched into because it counts as our multiple so we got to make sure we use it and the very first stitch you're going to go into that front loop only pull up a loop then yarn over go into the next stitch you don't have to do front loop only just go right into the stitch pull up a loop yarn over pull to all four loops and chain one and again go in the front loop only pull up a loop yarn over then go under both loops of the next stitch, pull up a loop, then pull through all four loops and chain one. Don't forget to chain one, it's very important. So again, you'll go through the front loop only of the first stitch, yarn over, go under both loops of the second stitch, pull through all four loops and chain one. And you want to go ahead and do this for your entire row and I'll show you how to in the row and turn and start the next row okay so I'm about to do my very last Glover stitch pull through all four loops and then I'm not going to slip stitch I mean I'm sorry I'm not going to chain one after the to end my uh, stitch here on the Glover stitch I'm going to go ahead and go right in to this big stitch that's on the side this is the Glover stitch the very first Glover stitch of your row and this opening on the side here very first place you can put your hook I'm going to slip stitch it there and that will end my row and it'll also add the stitch I needed uh, the second stitch that I needed for my Glover stitch then chain one and you want to flip your work now we're going to go right into this very first stitch we have here and we're going to go through the front loop only pull up a loop yarn over and then go under both loops just like we did before pull through all four loops chain one again going through that front loop only yarn over and then the both loops of the second stitch then chain one and this is how you do the Glover stitch in the Glover stitch there's a tighter area here and a bigger area here the tighter tighter area you just want to grab up that first stitch yarn over and then in the bigger stitch here go under both loops and then pull through all four loops and chain one you want to continue that all the way down and I'll again show you how to end your row okay I've reached the very end of my row and I have the next small stitch and then my next big stitch is here it's the same place that we slip stitched last time so I'm gonna go ahead and and it's also there's already a stitch coming out of there so go and finish your Glover stitch using that stitch then remember don't slip stitch after your last I mean don't chain one after your last Glover stitch you want to go ahead and slip stitch in this very first stitch of the row you can you can better see it if you turn your work a little bit this way I'm going to go under both those loops and then slip stitch in my row then chain one and turn and again you're going to go into that very first whoops <laughs> again you're going to go into that very first stitch where we slip stitched into we're going to go right in to that first stitch pull up a loop yarn over and then go under the both loops of the next stitch pull up a loop pull through all four loops chain one and then you want to continue this all the way around and you'll probably have an ending like the one I just showed you so you're going to want to repeat this uh, row two uh, the ending of row two 
um, for every row from now on. That way you can stay consistent. Okay, I've been working hard on the, getting the top done and I got this, I got uh, the first row of single crochets and then I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve rows of the Glover stitch and then I measured it on my daughter. It seemed like it was good so I'm just going to go 12 rows of that. I went ahead and hid some of my tails there at the bottom but I still have a lot on the inside of the top I got to get rid of. I was just marking out where I wanted to put the the straps. So measuring it on her I measured this one and I wanted to do the other one on camera for you. So what we did and remember the Glover stitch takes two stitches so when you're doing this remember that I have the straps width at four Glover stitches wide so these two stitches are one these two stitches are two these two stitches are three and then these two stitches are four so it's going to be a total of four Glover stitches wide and then when I come to the the side here it's going to be six Glover stitches so count one, two, three, four, five, six, and then the very next one you're going to mark in the first of the two Glover stitch. Remember, there's the smaller and then the bigger part of the Glover stitch. You want to mark in the smaller because that's the first part of the stitch. And then you want to go one, two, three, four, over, and then you want to place your marker on the bigger stitch. So this is a smaller stitch. So this is the, the Glover stitch. So you want to do it on the second part. So this one you're on the first part of the stitch, this one on the last part of the stitch. And then you'll then it'll be done on that side. Try to even up as best you can on this side. Make sure that this is on the center. You have three Glover stitches here and three Glover stitches here. And then move over you want to do your side stitch the same way. So I have one Glover stitch on this side, one Glover stitch on that side. My checking here to make sure that's still together, still even, that they match up my two stitches front and back, and that I have one Glover stitch on this side, one Glover stitch on this side of my corner. Don't have a Glover stitch here in the corner need one on facing each other. So I have one Glover stitch, one Glover stitch here that's two, four, six. So that's, that's my, uh, my corner there. Now the very first stitch over here I'm going to mark with a piece of string. And again I'll count two, four, six. So this is the it's equal on this side, so I'll mark it. And now from this stitch, let me just make sure that I had the right, yeah. Wait. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. So this is one, two, three, four. This is going to, and we need to do four. So one, two, three, four. This is the fourth. And I'm going to mark it into the furthest over. So this is at the beginning of the Glover stitch here. And then this is at the second part, the end of the Glover stitch here. And then we'll match this up as well. One, two, three, four. This is the fourth one over. And I will mark it as well. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and attach my yarn right here where my first marker is. Slip stitch to attach your yarn. You can use a different color here for this trap if you want. I don't like how that attached. And then go ahead and chain one. Then go into the front post only of the stitch you just did. It's going to be kind of difficult to grab it, but do it. Yarn over and then go under both loops of the next. Pull through all four loops and chain one. We're doing the Glover stitch again. 
should only be four of them. So make can make we can make quick work of it. Okay, chain one and turn. Come on, yarn. What are you doing here? Acting crazy. Okay, and you turn your project. And then again, this very first, actually, um, when you do the Glover stitch in a row like this, uh, when it's an actual row uh, at the end, um, your very last Clover stitch before you turn, you'll actually have to do two, a chain of two. Then turn. So not the first chain, but the second chain. You'll go in to only one of the loops of it, pull up a loop, Yarn over, go under both loops of the stitch. Pull through all four and chain one. Now we just make quick work of these next ones. Okay, I'm coming to the end here. So it's very strange. Looks that way. Okay, um, once you get to the end, remember you have to chain two before turning. Squeaky chair. So again, you don't use the first stitch. You go into the second chain, go only through one loop, pull up a loop. Then yarn over, go into both loops of the next. And you're going to continue to do this until you've reached your desired width. I mean, with, uh, you know, how long you want your strap. Okay, so I went ahead and attached my yarn here at my marker and did my strap just like this one as well. And now I want to sew it on. So make sure that the wrong side or the back side of the work is facing you and not the front side so that the showing won't won't show after you're done. So I'm going to go through where my my marker is. I think I'm going to go ahead and just take my hook off, insert it there where my marker is, and then through the loop. Then I'm just going to slip stitch that loop up. I'm going to go ahead and chain one. Okay, now I'm going to line up my strap to my next marker here. And then I'm going to go under the loops of one stitch on the dress and then one and then the it's equal stitch on the strap and I'm just going to slip stitch and don't uh, slip stitch too tightly because then it'll pull so I'm kind of pulling up my loop a little bit before I do my next sew because I don't want it to be too tight And I already went through and I hit all my tails and everything. <laughs> Boy, that was painstaking. Okay, so once I get to the last little bit here, I'm going to go ahead, chain one. And I tried this on my daughter, and she didn't want me to, to add sleeves. She wants me to leave it with just the straps. So I told her okay, but uh, I went ahead and I lined it with uh, a different color. I have a gray color there in the end which I also did with the Glover stitch. So now that I've got this attached I'm going to go ahead and take off my markers and then I'll show you how to start the border here. And I'm going to go ahead and hide my tails. And how I hide my tails is I usually try to go in two directions. So I'll go down a stitch few stitches using my tapestry needle and go one way and then I'll go back using other stitches but going back the way I just came so that it won't slip off and then I always pull my material because you when you cut your yarn you can guarantee that when somebody goes to wear this garment it's going to stretch so you want to go ahead and stretch it before you cut it just to make sure there's, there's less of a chance that it's going to come loose. It doesn't really matter. You can see my... Let me move this out of the way. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and flip this back over. 
My microphone cord showing here. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and do, I don't know if I'm going to do it in the middle. I kind of like uh, that that's white. So I think I'm just going to do it on this side. But you can feel free to do whatever you want. I also went ahead and grabbed a bigger size hook when I did the other side. I didn't do it on purpose, but I'm just going to go ahead and grab this one just because it's close. And it's a 5 millimeter hook. One of my older 5 millimeter hooks. Going to leave a tail before I make my loop so I can sew this in the tapestry needle just like I showed you before and I'm going to start on not the very very corner space oh, I should probably get close now I'm not going to start in the very corner space Whoa, this way I'm going to go to the one beside it but it doesn't really matter um, just as long as it's, it's kind of a small stitch here, but on the side stitches, it's going to be different. The, those are the side stitches of the Glover stitch, so it's going to be a lot more difficult. Um, this is a big stitch. This is a small stitch. I think I'm going to go ahead and start here in the small stitch, going in only the front loop only, because I want to do the Glover stitch. So I'm only going through the front loop. I'm going to pull up a loop, then yarn over, go into the next stitch, under both loops of the next stitch, pull up a loop and then pull through all four loops and chain one and then I'm just going to go into the very next place pull up a loop yarn over find another place pull up a loop pull through all four loops and chain one now it gets to be a bit tricky because it's thicker in some spots than others but you don't want to leave too much of a gap so if you can find a place on the side somewhere to pull up a loop yarn over and then now I got that big old space I can use. The trick is to basically just not to have too much of a space as you're going around because you don't want it to look weird at the end. Those spaces can show. So just continue to do the Glover stitch all the way around. Okay, I'm finishing my very last Glover stitch on this side. Then I'm not going to chain one, I'm just going to slip stitch into the beginning stitch and chain one. Cut my yarn. Oops. And there it is. It is done. She's going to be so happy when she gets home and she sees I finally finished this. That's it. Like I said, I, I don't think I'm going to put one here. I don't know. I'll put it on her and if she wants it there, then I can I can add it really easily. She saw it last night. She was like, oh my God, it's so cute. It's like a little dress. But it's a shirt. It's like a shirt sweater dress thingy. <laughs> I don't know what to call it. Well, that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to always be notified whenever I release a new tutorial, you can go to my main YouTube page and hit that bell button and it'll always notify you whenever I release a new tutorial. Also, I have a group on Facebook called Crochet for the Masses where we like to share projects that we're working on or just got done with or to ask questions. I really hope that you'll come and be a part of the group. You can find that link down below. So that's it, guys. Thank you so much for watching.